welcome back to Turntable Guy. On the bench today, we have a very classic, a very sought after turntable. This is a realistic Lab 420. This is a CEC manufacturer turntable, very similar to Hitachi models of the day. Um, and if you're looking at it and going, well, it's spinning nicely. Well, that's the problem with this one. It is not shutting off. Let me see if I can remove this dust cover. And if uh, we do a quick demonstration here, um, if I hit the start reject button, and I've got it set for 12 inch right now, it does in fact move into position and it lowers. And if I bring it to the end, it will auto return. But here's the problem. Can you hear that? That, 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 that sound? Something's not shutting off. So, got an auto return problem here. Um, my guess, probably a micro switch is what I'm going to say. Um, either that or the arm is uh, not coming back all the way. I, I can't really remember what's going on in uh, in the 420. I know some of the Yamaha CECs, there are a lot of controls near the front here. Uh, but as you can see, these are all kind of off to the uh, right side of the table here. So other than that, speed is good on it. I mean, the pitch controls are a little bit touchy, but it's holding speed, which is good to see. But um, this is not good. If I stop it, it just keeps going. So we're going to have to unplug this. And uh, I'm sure once we, we take the bottom off, it's going to reveal what the problem is. Um, I'm going to say micro switch and maybe sticky grease is what I'm going to go with first. Hopefully there's nothing physically broken. Now let's lock our tone arm and we will remove our head shell. Got an Ortofon uh, OM10 on this one. Let's remove our counterweight as well. We'll unplug it. Take off our platter mat. Take off our platter. <clears throat> okay, this one needs a little bit of persuasion. When you get a platter mat that or a platter that does not come off. Get the back end of a screwdriver, get, get a finger underneath there first, and just give it a tap, okay? And that's how you get it off. Okay, so here's our return. See if that's off now. No, it's still spinning. Still spinning, so not turning off. Okay. Let's get this one flipped over. Unplug. Our dust cover back on. If you can see this, here's another issue. This turntable has no feet. It's just the remnants of what were feet. So this turntable definitely needs four new feet. Let's get the base off. It's got a nice thick plastic base. Built quality on this is really nice. Like I always say, CEC manufactured some absolutely beautiful turntables back in the day. They really knew what they were doing. And um, some of the companies that use CEC, like Marantz, um, they would actually order uh, turntables to their specific design. And some of those are really beautifully built. 
This one is lovely. Nice wood. Nice, thick, solid plastic base. These are classic CEC screws. Wood capping screws. And there we go. So the question becomes, why aren't we shutting off here? Here's our micro switch. It's off now. It was just stuck. Why was it stuck? So if I plug this back in, Should be off and it is I hit start that is just the motor kind of rubbing against the um, the top of the platter here it won't cause any damage. As I lift it up with my fingers. So I'm just going to hit stop here. We're going to return it. You can see the arm coming back. And now, yeah, this is not, uh, I don't think it's anything major here. I think we've just got to the on, off, on, off, on, off. You can also see the light here. I'm not sure exactly why it's not turning off. This doesn't move left or right. Maybe the micro switch is a little bit... Again, that sound is not an issue. Huh. All right, well, let's uh, let's have a peek around. We're gonna unplug it, because uh, there are high voltages here. Um, and we're gonna service our pitch control, speed selector switch. I'm gonna service this uh, micro switch as well. And, uh, Wondering if there's any movement to this. There's quite a bit going on here. So that's our start. Kicks the solenoid here. This is our auto return. To, uh, engage. Okay, so this moves the arm and it's disengaged. This is in now. And if we turn it, there should be another click here. And as this comes back, it releases. It could be just this pivot point here that's a little sticky. Let's, uh, let's see if we can service this. I'm going to zoom in. Right here, there's a little plastic screw here to allow movement, undoubtedly. I'm just going to unscrew that. Is it a plastic screw? Yeah, it is a plastic screw. It's got a little washer, a little bearing here. Right here. And a little bit of movement. I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
release this screw as well. Okay, we got a little flat plastic here that keeps it on before it mounts. So I'm going to clean uh, this bearing here uh, with a little bit of alcohol. Make sure it's nice and clean. And I'm going to put a little bit of, of light, light, light grease on it. Let's just clean all that with alcohol. And then we'll see, uh, see how that works. First we'll clean the plastic. And we'll clean this bearing here. Bushing actually. some of that off. All right, let's uh, let's try that again. I'm not going to clean the switch. It seems to be working perfectly fine. Got to be really careful with that plastic screw. Definitely don't want to over tighten it. Okay, I'm going to try it again. Don't worry about the motor noise. See this clicks off here. And yeah, it's definitely, it's not getting out far enough. Hmm, fascinating. Okay, 
I am going to play a little bit with this. Uh, you kind of get the gist of where I'm going here with this. Um, it's a matter of finding out why, like when I push in the micro switch here, motor turns on, no problem. Micro switch is good. Um, it's when the auto return mechanism goes, um, what is causing this not to release the micro switch all the way once it returns to the home position. So I am just going to have a peek around here and uh, I'll be right back. Been playing a little bit with it. Um, it does re it does turn off the motor about let's say 50% of the time. I also think it has something to do with the fact that the motor's not getting torqued because it's kind of rubbing against the uh, the top the bottom of the plinth here. Um, but um, I do want to remove this mechanism here. There's a little bit of grease under here which I want to clean. This is part of the auto start mechanism here. So unplug that again. And we're going to remove this E-clip here. And we're just going to pull up on this. Uh, it is spring-loaded here as well. I just want to see what the lubrication is like here. There's obviously a setting here that must okay I'm starting to get a... so that clicks on like that that drops down and that okay so as this comes it's together switch is out when you press start click switch goes in motor starts okay obviously this has something to do with uh, bringing on this solenoid here. And then this is on the return. This clicks and that releases. So this is it's really got nothing to do with lubrication. I'm going to tell you that right now. This is not a lubrication issue. That's the home position. It's fully out. The spring is good and springy. This is the spring that's doing the work here. You can see it's quite, quite a bit of tension on it there. Um, let me just... Uh, actually, I don't think I can... Does this feel smooth? You see, not really. It doesn't feel bad either, and there's no factory lube on here. I'm going to put a drop of oil here. Just a little drop. I'm going to put a little drop here. I'm going to put that E-clip back on. I really don't think that has anything to do with it. I mean, it is the, it is the mechanism that's controlling it. But the grease is fine. Okay, there we go. Lock in. On. And there's off. On, off. There's no problem here. Let me grab just a smidge of grease. a little bit here. Bring it back. Okay, 
see the switch is definitely off there. If I plug it in, okay, you should hear the motor when I do this. And then release it, it comes off. Oh, now I've activated the auto return. That's okay. Let's let, let it go through its motions here. And then we'll hit that again. Come back. It's definitely off. Yeah, very interesting. Okay, um, what we do is when we turn the turntable back over, we'll we'll verify that that's working. I I think I'm okay here. So okay, let's service this motor. How are we doing? Uh, yeah, we're good. Sorry if that was exceptionally boring, but uh, sometimes you need to exercise parts to get them going again. tight here. There we go. All right. Here's your classic direct drive motor by CEC. A couple of fine pitch controls here. And uh, let's pop your motor out. Bearing well. No ball bearing on this one. The axle has a rounded end. So just a matter of uh, cleaning and reapplying electric motor oil. Now you guys have probably seen me do this so many times now. That you're probably going, do we really need to see this again? No, you don't. But if someone owns a Lab 420 and they're here for servicing, they want to know how to service it. They're going to know. They're going to want to know what to do. So anyway, what you want to do is absorb. All the old oil, grab some uh, isopropyl alcohol, dampen the end of a Q-tip and clean out the well as best as you can. Just want to remove all the old lubricant and get it squeaky clean. Just like that. Okay. On the other end of things, you're going to want to get a paper towel and dampen that. And you're going to want to clean the spindle and or axle here of the lubricant as well. Just like that. Okay, and once you once you find out that your bearing well is nice and dry, like mine is here, you're going to grab some electric motor oil. Okay, what I'm using here is uh, some three-in-one oil for uh, motors for electric motors. Okay, if you don't have this, you can use other types of oil in a pinch. Okay, but if you can, you know, it's best to get uh, something that's engineered for motors, electric motors. So a few drops there. We drop here. 
and then you're gonna just rest this back into the into the pit and it will go down just like that and you've got a freshly lubricated motor and uh, when you're done that you just put it back it's very very simple to do This is kind of nice. You can access the two potentiometers on the motor through the bottom of the case. So if I put this back on here, these two these two potentiometers here, they're accessible right there, which is really handy. So you can dial in speed if you're having issues up top. And if you're uh, if you really want to go crazy you can replace the capacitors on the motor board as well. And you can replace the capacitors in the power supply. Okay. Underneath here, there's not much else to do other than cleaning our uh, speed controls. We will do that next. And then we'll do a test up top to see how our work on that uh, micro switch went. Hopefully it shuts off. If not, I'm going to have to dig in a little deeper. It could be something somewhere else on here, but you know what? I don't see any kind of nasty grease on here whatsoever. Um, it all looks really good. I mean, the only place that I might put another dab is right here. Right there. Where this uh, auto return thingamajobby there moves back and forth. That, that's it. Let's do the uh, pitch controls. All right, so speed selector switch. And one of these is 33 and one of these is 45. Grab some contact cleaner, electrical contact cleaner. You can spray it from the front like this. And then you can give it a shot through the two holes at the back. Just like that. Lift up your turntable and work your pitch controls back and forth. Make sure you do the full sweep to uh, distribute the cleaner. Now this switch looks pretty sealed. Doesn't look like there's any way to get any cleaner in here. So we're just going to leave it for now. Okay. We'll see how it operates. Okay. Let me uh, let me pause. I'm just going to put the the base back on it. And I'll flip it over and we'll uh, we'll test the uh, the arm again. Okay. We're back here. Put the platter back on. Got it plugged in, and we're going to give it a test. Like I said, we had no problems with starting. We had some problems with it shutting off after uh, it had finished the cycle. So shouldn't have any problems with it starting. It doesn't. Arm goes down, which is good. So our main issue here is, will it shut off? And it does. Or it did that time. Let's try it again. Let's try our size. Let's go for a seven inch record here. See if it comes all the way over here. 
Oh, that's good. I'm going to return. And shut off. Yes. So it looks like we fixed that. We fixed the uh, the arm not shutting off. That's great. Um, yeah, so that's that's really about it. I don't think there's anything else to do on this one. Um, we have lubricated the motor. We have repaired our auto shutoff mechanism. Again, it was uh, due to a micro switch, but not the micro switch itself. It was the activation of the micro switch. So there's usually some kind of arm uh, that turns it on and off. And in our case there, I'm not 100% sure what it was. Um, we did clean the post where the little arm that turns it on and off um, resides. So that's clean. And I put a little bit of lubrication on the other mechanism there. But it wasn't like a real glaring problem. I think it was just maybe this hasn't been used in a while and it just needed to go through the motions again, right? So, and you'll find that a lot with uh, turntables that have been sitting for a very, very long time. Um, you know, um, machines need to run, right? They, they don't like sitting still. So sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, getting them going again. Yes, they definitely do need fresh lubrication and all the rest of it. But uh, sometimes... Uh, issues will clear up just from running them so um yeah i'm not going to do a sound test here um it's nothing particularly exciting um just a standard cec turntable but uh like i mentioned this turntable is very sought after um in the used market and it uh, commands really good prices uh and that's because they're really nice looking the uh, the plinth is a really nice uh walnut brown and it looks sharp so um that is the lab 420 by realistic uh, manufactured by C uh, CEC. And uh, that's it for this one. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks. Take care.